Hardly Clap and welcome to another Wrestling Wednesday because you know what time it is, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, wherever you are. Um, it's time to talk a little bit about wrestling, wrestling. Um, and yeah, for those who follow along, you know I'm not the biggest <laughs> supporter, sports entertainment supporter. And yes, this week, one more time, I did not watch any WWE. I'm sorry for those who waiting for my hot takes on WWE because they are so groundbreaking and trailblazing. Uh, not this week. If there is time, I'll try with SmackDown again because it's more bearable than uh, NXT or Raw. But yeah, I mean, NXT, I follow NXT, of course, the, with like Gargano and, and Kyle O'Reilly and so on. But let's see where they will show up. Uh, <laughs> for this week, again, checking in with AW and still not on a paycheck uh, that's issued by Tony Khan. Tony, we can still change that. <laughs> so let's jump into a uh, Dynamite and Rampage. Let's see what stories unfold. Did it make sense? What happened? And so on. And we, of course, start with AW Dynamite. And we start with the Diamond Ring Battle Royal, which was pretty good Battle Royal. I'm usually not a big fan of Battle Royals because most Battle Royals, as I mentioned in previous podcasts, are just annoying because it's always the same this the same formula like yeah you've got 30 people in the ring but then there's like those two over there those two over there and a few just chill on the outside it's always the same um aw usually does it a little bit better this wasn't the best battle royal ever but it did have a few nice stories in their main story of course mjf eliminating Wardlow after Wardlow of course protected him during the whole match and then as when the chance can came up mjf Cerebral as he is, uh, just eliminated Wardlow, not by himself. Uh, Wardlow was entangled with, like, I think, two others, and then MJF just kicked them all out and celebrated a little bit. It's like, hey, it's just business. So that fits the MJF persona. That makes sense. The bigger picture here was, however, of course, the entrance of MJF because it's in Long Island, his home. And yes, he was celebrated like a hero. It's like when CM Punk was heel and he would walk into Chicago. Long Island had MJF's back and it was awesome. MJF even really, he genuinely smiled and uh, broke a little bit character there, uh, but which then in the end uh, he didn't do anymore. So that, uh, the final two members were eventually MJF and Dante Martin, which means now at this week's, com uh, week's coming winter is coming event, they will face off to then uh, see who is the winner and who gets to move forward. In order to do so, Dante Martin actually eliminated his brothers from Team Taz that he just joined last week or so, and now he turned on Team Taz. Taz furious on commentary, sold it very well. After the and after the final bell. Then they attacked Dante Martin in the ring when MJF was already out of the ring and up the ramp. And he's like, "Should I come back and should I should should I, should I come back and should, should I help him? Should I really like should I huh?" And then he runs runs back to the ring. He's like, "Really? He's gonna help him? Or maybe because it's in Long Island, and he wants to be the good guy for once." No, he beats down Dante Martin together with Team Taz. Fantastic heel work, MJF. Uh, I want your child. No, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, MJF. Yeah, great heel work. Uh, everything in character fits perfectly. Let's see how long he can keep that up. But for now, awesome. Uh, well done. Yeah, MJF. Um, of course, uh, the MVP here also, of course, Dante's, uh, Dante Martin's turn again on, on his newfound team. Screwed, swerve all along. But then why didn't he work together with Leo Rush before so that or help him at least stay in the ring like eh, it's still a bit weird there um yeah, but it was definitely definitely a fun a fun match not the best the best battle royal far from it but still uh, a fun match and of course a fun payoff like from a storytelling point of view i think the storytelling was more important than the match itself and hence uh, i'm giving it a thumbs up we then saw the jurassic express versus uh, the was uh, and the was the plants versus the acclaimed and 2.0 with their stoochie friend with them of course um that was fun it was exactly what you expected but it was fun it was like back and forth good tag team action commentary did very well did a very good job they did very well in like explaining that it's kind of weird at varsity blonde's tag with Jurassic express because Jurassic express 
are the ones in the way of the varsity blondes, which is kind of nice. And then they explain like how the varsity blondes might consider just like turning on Jurassic Express, like or just they have to go through them to go to the top. And that was kind of kind of well done, like the seats well sewn uh, with commentary, which is very much appreciated. The um, action, of course, spilled everywhere, which was awesome. And then um, in the end, of course, Jungle Boy with a hot tag, of course, um, burns the house down. Um, and then in the end, they just all hit their finishers, and uh, yeah, of course the of course um, of course the baby faces win, but not um, without getting some heat on the heels, of course. Um, all the fun was that Daniel Garcia was on the apron to distract and Eddie Kingston coming out because of course he's got like something to discuss with with, uh, with Garcia. Good job. Good job. So that was, that was fun overall. I liked that uh, as well. Good back and forth action. was just fun to watch. The story, like why those eight now? I mean, you have face versus heel. Okay, cool. Um, but the commentary did a good job in like sowing some small seeds as to like, will the Rossi Blondes face Jungle Express sooner or later? So that was, I think, well done there. Then, of course, match three of the night. Well, the Young Bucks versus Chuck Taylor and Rocky Romero, and it was just nice to see them back together again. That was pretty nice. Um, of course, it started a lockup because that's how you do it. Um, lots of New Japan style in here, of course, which was someone who used to watch New Japan a lot. Um, that was just fun. It was great to see. I really liked that. Perfectly done. Um, also, like just Rocky Romero back in action is just, it's just nice. Chuck Taylor back in action, of course, also nice. Um, of course, the Young Bucks trying to um, like use the underhand tactics. Brandon Cutler tries to, to interfere with the spray enough this time one more time. He misses. Um, it was all, um, that was just fantastic. Cole also involved, of course, which was nice. Um, Orange Cassidy, of course, also involved. It was just, it had everything you expected it, it would have and it just all put it together very well it's not too much there was lots of interference but not that, that much that you think what that ww does sometimes also sometimes aw but in this case it really meshed together very well so the pl the match was well planned throughout um the finish was also cool um I'm hesitating because, yeah, the Young Bucks won. But then, um, because afterwards, right, so then, then Cole, of course, and the Young Bucks, they, they attack. Um, Orange Cassidy comes in for the save. Cole is there. Then we have Vila Yuta, of course, also getting involved. Uh, he attacks Cole, which is important for later on the road. Um, then they super kick Yuta and, like, back and forth, back and forth. And BTE trigger um, for... Like they try to hit a beat BTE trigger on Orange Cassidy, and what happens? Best friends music hit, hits, and what what's happening? They're, all the best friends are in the ring. Who could it be? It's Sue. <laughs> Sue drives in, the door opens, and who is it? It's Trent Barretta. Yes, Trent Barretta, and he's he's he looks like Jack. He looks like he looks like Matt Cardona when he when he returned from being Zack Ryder. He looks shredded AF. Oh my god. Um, so, spear to, like, a, like a death spear to Brandon Cutler. Um, a huge clothesline in the ring to Matt. Um, just like clears house, sends everybody packing. Uh, Sue and Sue on the outside with Chris Dadlin are just watching on, like, yes, that's it. And then in the end, Trent Perpera stands tall, saves them, and. Uh, yeah, the people get what they want. And Sue comes to the ring, of course. They're celebrating big best friends. Hug, of course. Um, and Ropongi Y is playing. F awesome. Awesome, awesome. That's why I was like smiling before I even explained it. Because it was just awesome. The storytelling here also fits. The Young Bucks win again. Because that's what they do, no matter how. But then the comeuppance, of course. Um, introduction of Trent, Bar Trent Barretta again. Um, which is awesome. Sue, of course, always, always happy to see Sue. Uh, so overall, this was just nice 
harmonic um, ending. Sometimes you're just gonna give the people what they want, what makes them happy, and here AW did just that, made the people in the arena watching just happy, and it was just nice. Um, what was also nice from a storytelling point of view was like the camera then showing Orange Cassidy being really pissed. That was really nice. Um, so let's see what, what this will hold in the future, of course. Then, hilarious, <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, then we had uh, Sammy Guevara being interviewed by Tony and then all, all of a sudden, out comes Cody Rhodes. And the boos, massive boos on Cody Rhodes. It's fantastic, like, the, oh my God, Long Island, I kind of dig it. Um, dig it, yeah, um, that was cool. He said, yeah, Tony agreed that I will have the next match with you next week. Good luck, kid. And Aaron Booth, of course, meant some, the, um, some promo from within the audience from Ethan Page. Like, yeah, of course, Cody gets it and blah, blah, blah. And he then announced that um, our best friend from um, Amer American, not America's, American top team, Dan Lambert, will be back soon. So can't wait for this. Um, the next match we saw then eventually was Jamie Hayter versus Riho. And that was, that, that, has, that got a lot of time, surprisingly, which is cool. Um, so I appreciate it. I like Riho a lot, of course. Jamie Hayter also great. Um, so it got more time than expected, like 50 minutes almost, I think, if, if, if memory uh, serves right. There was a nice back and forth. I really like this. Um, the, the match was really nicely planned. Again, the pace was nicely set. Um, and of course, also then all the, just a back and forth. And like, of course, also like Jamie Hayter, the, trying to be dirty. Um, that was just really nice. And of course, and also afterwards, Britt Baker then like just going all, all, great, all, all crazy, of course, um, with the lock and on Rio afterwards that, that had to come, of course. But it was just really nice. Story-wise, also makes sense that Rio beats Jamie Hayter because then, of course, she can move on eventually to feud uh, with uh, Dr. Britt Baker. Exactly. Um, then we have an, a nice announcement by Taz. says like, Hook will be in action this Friday against Fuego del Sol. Okay, nice. Um... What else? Uh, let me check my... Oh yes, last one of course. How can I forget to check in my notes? Um, Brian Danielson uh, versus John Silver. And of course, this is... This is... Some hardcore back and forth, of course. Like some trading of kicks and Silver really gives it to, 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 uh, to Danielson, of course. Uh, like, and his power displays... His, this, this, his power uh, all through, of course, but eventually um, Brian Danielson, of course, gets it um, with a with a kind of like a neutralizer kind of thing. But then he goes for submission, uh, and Silver just goes out, and then that's how Brian Danielson wins. And of course, then he then he stomps his head again. Adam Page uh, comes out and says, "Next week." He even and I wrote down he was he will stomp the cowboy shit out of Brian Danielson. That was the end of the show. Again, fun show, storytelling. Yeah, Brian Danielson worked his way up now to John Silver, who's like quite up high up the rankings, of course, in the dark order. Now, next up next week, Hangman Adam Page. So this is gonna be lots of fun, I believe. Uh, so storytelling was again it was. It made sense. It wasn't too too much dragged out. A few of the the intermissions, yeah. But other than that, lots of fun. Well done. Well structured. Um, yeah. Thumbs up here from my point of view. Then we moved on to um, Rampage, of course. And what we had at Rampage, let me get out my notes. We had the beginning with the tag team titles, the Lucha Bros versus um, FTR. And here there was also lots of fun, of course, because, I mean, how can a Lucha Bros and FTR match not be fun? Um, it all spilled out. Tully Blanchard got involved. So, again, I'm not recapping the, the, all the matches. I'm just saying what happened and, like, how I think the story makes sense. So, in this case, eventually, um, the Lucha Bros win. Um, which was nice. 
The thing is, none of the matches measures up to, of course, the cage match I had anymore. But that, that, that's obvious. I mean, that's a TV match, not, not a you know, crazy pay-per-view match. I know, but it's, you still always have it in the back of your head. Nevertheless, those matches are always great. And it's also nice how they sometimes just just play with each, each other, even though it's like, of course, they're like all mean and stuff like this. Like even like Phoenix hit a move on Tully Blanchard, even though they're supposed to be the good guys, uh, after Tully Blanchard tried to get involved. And then I, I think what, what just encapsulates it is like simply that like when Penta El Cerro Miedo takes off his glove and then what was it Cash Wheeler, I'm not sure, they just tries to interfere and he's like, and then he throws his glove up Cash Wheeler's like, huh? catches the glove and then just Penta goes for it and, 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 and I don't know, stomps him, kicks him, whatever. It's, it's funny, but also still like hard. So it's, it's a nice combination, like how those two teams put this all together. So I'm a big fan here of this. Uh, it's not the best of matches ever, but it was fantastic, um, fun to watch. And the story here is, of course, that they, the Lucha Bros retain their titles, so we still have like two titles there, the tri AAA and the, the AW title, so they can keep feuding a little bit, and which is cool because they're just awesome together. Um, we then had, oh god, yeah, I forgot, I just saw in my notes, I forgot. We had Nyla Rose, I always try to ignore Nyla Rose matches, the Bunny and Penelope Ford versus Anna J, Ty Conti, Ty Conti, and uh, Ruby Soho. And I'm not a big fan yet of Ruby Soho in AW, to be honest. It's just too much tailored to her, in my opinion. Um, yeah. It was okay. It was okay. The thing that, 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 that also annoys me sometimes at AW, though, like also Wednesday, also Friday, like those extended commercial breaks. Yeah, picture and picture, but come on, it really is, is annoying. Um, Nevertheless, in, in the end, like lots of finishers, but no one really did anything. Then Vicky Guerrero on the outside, of course, slipping some brass knuckles um, in, and then Nyla Rose hitting the beast bomb. That's what I wrote down in my notes, right? Yeah, and so beast bomb for the win. Yeah, nice. Um, not much story moving forward. Nyla was like, yeah, I'm the beast. I kill everybody or whatever. Um, but other than that, like, besides like heel versus face here, I am not too involved to be honest um yeah and then the well we had hook versus fuego del sol of course um it was the first match of hook and i think fuego del sol is just a great opponent to make his opponents look good because he's just he flops and flips and sells and does everything for for his opponent which is nice hook is very 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 green um didn't show many suplexes <laughs> It's a bit it's a, it's too, too bad, but he also doesn't look like he could do like that many suplexes, to be honest. Um, yeah, it was a very short match, like three minutes or so. Um, and in the end, yeah, he does the task mission. <laughs> but okay, that, that's about it. Like, yeah, it's a nice introduction for, for Hook. Um, I'm not a big fan yet. I just don't like his... I, I, he just needs to work, and I think he's just in this position because of his dad. Uh, I think he needs to, he needs more work. No no doubt that he's gonna be great eventually. He just looks very young still, so I think he just needs more work, like with the acting as well as in in, in the ring. But it will come, of course. Just not sure if he should be like in that position that he is right now. Um, then main event: Adam Cole versus Vila Utah. Because remember Wednesday, Vila Utah kicked Adam Cole when he when he rescued his friends, and now Adam Cole and Vila Utah fight. Storytelling is so easy. A uh, WWE just look that's so easy. They have an encounter on Wednesday. They fight on Friday. <laughs> it's so easy. The match itself was nice, lots of again back and forth in the beginning because Vila Yuta is of course like this high flyer flipper and so on, so that was nice. Um, we have Orange Cassidy also on, on the ring of course, Cole and Orange Cassidy have like a stare down in between at, at some point. Um, eventually, the, eventually, like back and forth, Young Bucks and whatnot, um, Cole finishes the, with the boom of course and um, yeah. What I liked here was um, that there was not a big brawl and interference uh, in there um, because you don't need to have it all the time, right? So that, that, that's a nice thing. I didn't, I'm not sure if it was really necessary, the way it went down, but I mean, you can see where this is going eventually all with Orange Cassidy, so still okay. Not the greatest match, but still okay, and it furthers the story, I believe. So fine, fine with me. 
All right, so that's a, that's a quick uh, recap of what happened. Now let's quickly also just mo um, look at what's going to happen here with um, winter is coming, uh, which will happen on December 15th. And we will have a few matches that are announced already. We, um, we will see Wardlow and Sean Spears versus Matt Seidel with Mike Seidel. That's going to be... I mean, since it's a singles match and it's Wardlow, they I think they want to really put Wardlow a little bit more over um, so that there are more pillars to MJF's uh, stable. So I think Wardlow's going to basically run through Matt Sattel, probably Sean Spears getting involved with, with a chair on Mike Sattel and so on. But then I think that, that that's that going to put Wardle a little bit higher in, in, in the hierarchy. We have Hikaru Shida with Serena Deep. It's a no DQ, which should favor Deep, but I think we will see Hikaru Shida there taking this, of course, because she needs a payback, of course. And then we have MJF with Sean Spears and Wardle by his side, probably, with this Dante Martin um, in the singles match for the Diamond Ring. Yeah, of course. Probably even Team Test like like roughing up Dante Martin before or something, but this has to be the case, right? And we have Hangman Adam Page versus Brian Danielson for the AW World Championship. And that's tough. That's really tough. Because of course you would say, no, they're not going to switch titles A so fast and B on a non-pay-per-view. But then you would think, oh, maybe they do it because they want like... Like what WWE does sometimes, titles can change at any time. So maybe they do it just so that they turn heads and like, oh my God, really? And I mean, it's Brian Danielson, so whew. there must be some other way out that I don't see yet, probably. Um, I mean, Hangman Aaron Page doesn't rely on interference, of course, and Brian Danielson doesn't have any uh, any allegiance yet, so it's going to be difficult to see, like, who's mad enough at Adam Page? Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega returns this leads to DQ victory or something like this. Oh, maybe. Let's see about that. And I'm really excited about this. I want to see what, what's going to happen. Um, there will be probably a few more matches added like, as we speak, but it should be fun. We will talk about next this next week, of course. Let's see which stories come out of Winter is Coming. By the way, is Winter is Coming still a thing? Well, aren't I a bit late to call it Winter is Coming? I mean, I appreciate it, but it's a bit late. No, should should... Add some Tiger King reference, some Squid Game reference, I don't know. AW, Squid game, Games, okay, that's lame. I leave this to AW to figure out. Um, thanks for joining. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, rate this thing so we can have a bigger community and can, can discuss all those things. Uh, shout out on social media, at Funkitpod. Email is funkitpod at gmail.com. Uh, I appreciate you very much. Don't forget to always kick out a two, and I'll see and talk to you rather soon. Take care, stay safe. See you then. Sorry, Cap. Oh, no.